Hello, this is Channel Easy Self Host. This video is a step by step beginner guide for self hosting services. If you want to run some self hosted services but don't know how to get started, this is the video for you. And there will be more videos coming to this series to help you build your self hosted ecosystem. At the end of this video, you will have a self hosted note taking app using Memos running under your personal domain. We will run our services on affordable cloud providers at first, so you don't need to invest in any hardware upfront. And we will do everything in the browser so it doesn't matter what operating system you are using. You will expect to pay $10 a year for a personal domain name, that's for all your future services, and 4 bucks per month for your cloud server that you can cancel anytime, and it costs you by hours of usage. You will be reusing these resources for future self-hosted services. And let's get started with self-hosting. Let's first go to Cloudflare to purchase our domain name. Cloudflare has great domain registry and managing services. You will need to sign up a Cloudflare account to use it. After signing up the account, let's click Add a website or application to get started. And then enter domain registration and register domains. You will need to verify your email address in order to use this. After that, you can start searching the domain names you like. For this tutorial, I'll use the domain name goselfhost.com. Let's check its availability, and looks like it's available for $9 a year. Then we can click the purchase button and get the domain. Here, you will need to provide some of your personal and payment information. After you finish the payment and get the domain, you will land on this page and now the domain is yours. We will then need to manage our domain by pointing the domain name to the server address we are going to run. But before that, we need to spin up our server first. We are going to use DigitalOcean to run ourselves a virtual server that's going to run our application. DigitalOcean is a very popular service that hosts your virtual private servers. To use it, we will need to sign up an account first. You will also need to provide your payment information before running any servers. After all of your information is ready, you will now land in the DigitalOcean dashboard. Here, let's click Deploy a Virtual Machine to get started. Now you can start to configure the specs of your virtual server. First, we need to pick the region that your server is going to run. I recommend somewhere close to you so the network will be faster. For operating system, let's use Ubuntu and the default version. For the server specs, the $4 option is good enough to run a few applications. You can resize it later if you need more computing and memory resources. Then you need to come up with a strong password for your server. And the last step is to name your server. Now we can create and spin up our server. And wait a while for the server to be set up. Then let's click the server and get into its dashboard. The first thing we can do here is copy its IPv4 address. Then we can go back to Cloudflare and point our new domain name to this address. Let's click update DNS configuration. Here we can create a DNS record for the new node application we are going to run. We are going to choose type A and fill in something as subdomain. For example, I choose to use Mammoth as my subdomain. And it will point mammoth.goselfhost.com to the IP address I provide. Then let's disable the proxy option and click save. And now we have a domain name that points to our server. After this, let's go back to DigitalOcean dashboard. And we can click the console button to connect to our server. It can let us to remotely control our machine using command line. Then we need to type in a few commands to run our node application. If you have never used command line before, you can just follow me step by step. In a future video, I'll share more on how to use command line. First, let's type clear and enter to clear the current screen. The first thing we need to do here is to install a software called Docker. Docker can help us run application with minimum configuration. We can install it by typing the following command. This command will download the official Docker script and run it. And then let's hit enter and wait for it to install. It will print a bunch of stuff in your screen and shows this when it finishes. Then you can type in clear to clear the screen again. Then you can use the command docker ps to check if Docker is installed. It will show this header line. Next, we are going to use this command to create a Docker network with a name called ProxyNet. This network is used to bind our application to a proxy server. We will use it in a moment. Next, we are going to run our node application using this docker run command. It starts with docker run and is followed by a few options that describes this application. Notice that we use backslash to break the line when the command gets too long. 
At the end, we give Docker an URL to fetch the application container. In our case, we are using the BAMO's official container. In a future video, I'll show you why this command will run our application. For now, let's just hit enter to launch our Node app. We can run Docker PS again to check if the BAMO's container is running. We then need to proxy our domain name to this application so we can access it in the browser. To do that, we need to run another container that has a proxy server called caddy. This command will have different arguments. It needs to publish port 80 and 443 to enable HTTP and HTTPS. We also need to tell caddy which domain name we are going to proxy from and what application hostname we are going to proxy to. You need to change the domain name in this command to what you get. The application hostname mammals colon 5230 should stay the same because that is defined by our previous command. Then let's launch our proxy server. We can run docker ps again to check if the caddy container is running. Now everything is up, we can open a new browser tab and enter our domain name mammals.goselfhost.com and then you will say our mammals application website is running. We can play around here by first signing up an account for ourselves. I have a previous video on how to use Memos. Essentially, you can write notes here and post it on your timeline. One thing you should notice here is that our connection is secure using HTTPS. That's because the Caddy server handled that for us. Also, you don't need to keep the command line tab open because the application is running in the background on the server. Now let's go back to DigitalOcean and start a console again. We are going to check a few things before we end this tutorial. We can always run docker ps again to check if our containers are running. Like I said, they are still running even after we close the command line window. You might be curious where the mammals app store its data. It's under this mammals directory and in this database files. If you want to stop our application, you can run docker stop caddy mammals. Then our application will be done. And if you refresh the mammals tab, you will get nothing. To restart the application, you can simply run docker start caddy mammals. Then the mammals app will be back online again. You can go to the mammals tab and refresh again to check. Okay, that's all for this video. And enjoy using your first self-hosted application. Please consider subscribing for content like this. Thank you for watching.